Hi, Nikki. Welcome to our session. Hi, Taylor. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. So here's, here's the prompt for you. I would love to hear a couple of things to get us started. One yeah. is, what are you dealing with that you'd love support around? And what would be an outcome or even a miracle uh, that could happen in this conversation that would really move things forward for you? Yeah, great. Um, I, when I was listening to one of your other mini sessions about expansion, you said, um, you used the word, it looks like everything's beyond the dam or the wall was the dam. And um, I often think of everything that's coming for the business is I'm holding back at this dam, but the wall's getting so hard to hold up now <laughs> that I know it has to break. And I've been, I've, I lost my confidence with my business about two years ago, I was doing an online program and some face-to-face um, -face workshops. And I just got some negative feedback from actually from a friend and it just, crushed me and I just couldn't, I've really struggled to get my confidence back around it. It made me spiral into this doubt about what I'm doing and where I'm going. And of course that takes on another journey of your own self-discovery. Um, so that, in, you know, there's been lots of positives to that, but I can see now that everybody's screaming energetically to get me to move forward. And um, I just feel like this is a pattern. As soon as I have a failure or what I perceive to be a failure, I put that wall up or the dam up and I'm not letting myself get back out there again. And it doesn't matter how much work I seem to be doing on this. It's not that next step to leadership just seems to be too overwhelming. Okay. Although I'm doing that on a one-to-one -one basis and in small groups, but I'm just not taking it to that next level. Okay. Yeah. Oh, first, I'm so sorry. I just really want to validate. Yeah, I mean, cr feedback, like sometimes feedback can be great and sometimes it can be not and even yeah. well intention crushing. So yeah. I just, I want to yeah. not that first. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, and I can really feel like what that did to your heart and your system. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> so it feels like, uh. <laughs> Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Can I, can I ask a bit about that pattern? Because it was interesting that you said it wasn't just this event, but that, that you've noticed that as a pattern is, is when you experience failure or perceive failure, then, yeah. you, then a wall goes up and you withdraw. Is that right? Yeah. I withdraw a lot. So I feel like I put myself out there a lot, but the minute that it gets, yeah, like it, that is that um, perceived failure, everything just closes down. And I see this in relationships and friends, um, you know, and I know part of my life path is to manage being open enough with friends and still keeping everybody else at a distance, that boundary of where friends from and work and everything gets a bit blurred. And I have quite a community. So everything is blurred with my work. <laughs> you know, when you have that sort of tribal community that you're leading one-on-one -on -one or, you know, face-to-face, you get to know people really well, but there's still not that space of, um, you know, keeping what you need working separately. And as soon as I get anything or negative comments from anyone, I just feel myself keep going back and back and I'm doing less and less and giving less and less of myself. Um, I guess for feeling, want, not wanting to feel hurt again, I guess is the reason behind that or that fear of that. Um, but um, it's showing up in lots of areas. Okay. Okay. There are a couple of paths that it feels like one is, and, th and this is part of why I just wanted to go like, oh, and, and really acknowledge the pain of it, is it seems like when we're ever really up to something where there's risk, um, then there's failure and disappointment. Yeah. And um, what I don't know that's talked about a lot is, is how do we actually grieve that, like really feel it and really grieve it so it doesn't become stuck in our system and, and start to become stuck in our future. Yeah. So that's one thing I hear is that that grief and that hurt and not wanting to feel it again. Yeah. Um, is now, is now dictating how you show up. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm curious how, how did you, or have you, um, grieved or integrated the pain of that feedback or the pain of that failure? Um, 
on a logical level, I've done a lot of that. Mm -hmm. There's still the, the emotion of that is probably still sitting there a little. Um, you know, even that friend, we've had lots of, I haven't actually, well, I have spoken to her about it in little bits over the past, but we've, we've just had, um, we went away together just a little while ago and I realised that <clears throat> some of what she said wasn't actually about the situation mm -hmm. and that I, I can separate that now and I understand it on a different level. But, of course, when you hear anything negative, you just take it to that place of familiarity of devastation or, or hurt. And I think what I have done to grieve it really has just been to hide then when I lost another close friend at the end of last year and experienced really deep grief, it's kind of, it's actually released some of those other grief patterns as okay. well, which has been, you know, insightful in a lot of ways. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So, so the, the hiding in a way that it sounds like um, the pain of the failure hasn't really had somewhere to go or be fully processed. Yeah. Staying there and then informing your future. Yeah. So I guess my other question would be, you know, what it sounds like is the way that negative feedback um, gets interpreted is, is really painful. And what I know of sticking my neck out there or taking risks, you know, especially when you said you're, you're held back by your next level of leadership, is that when we really do and we have actually any opinion or stance or offering uh, that really opens us up to criticism, backlash, uh, well-intentioned feedback. And so there is a certain level of resilience in the face of both failure and feedback that's needed. Yeah. And what it sounds like is that you haven't developed that resilience. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be a, like, so how do you develop that resilience? Yeah. Might be a question to explore. Yeah. Actually, I just had an aha moment then where yeah. it comes from. <laughs> um, so my parents have always been extremely critical of my weight and they are very superficial and very, um, they're very small little people. <laughs> oh, thank and, small little people for that. <laughs> thank you, small little people. And I'm not part of that gene pool. <laughs> oh. And, um, yeah, it's interesting because it is, it's that old pattern of being, um, having negative feedback and then being hurt by it. So I can just see that that's where it actually okay. stems from. So you, like any feedback. When you put two together, I was just like, yeah. I remember when I was a kid and my brother would just have to look at me a certain way and I would like run screaming to my mom being like, he's, he's going to call me fat. And she'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> I can see it on his face. He didn't say it, but I know he's thinking it. And it's just like, oh, it's so painful. It's so painful. Okay, so it's um there's a there's a pattern of the deep wounding of, of negative feedback. It sounds like even to a point where any feedback that's not good feedback will be interpreted as negative feedback and interpreted as failure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's something to work on. <laughs> <laughs> so, couple possible ways to work with that. Um, one is is to actually do like a bit of cognitive separating of what yeah. was said from the interpretation. Yeah. In the feeling. So um, whatever the you know, so we say somebody says like, oh, you know that course you put out seemed a little scattered. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Um, and it's like, okay, so course seemed a little scattered. Maybe there's some great feedback in there to iterate and take and, and use. But then the interpretation is, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't make good things. Yeah. Uh, like that. Does that, yeah. does that feel like that's the, it's like yeah. that goes into <laughs> your worth and who yeah. you are? Okay. Absolutely. And you know, for others watch, uh, thank you so much, A, for your vulnerability, for your clear seeing and exploring, because I think that this is, I mean, maybe this is huge for men too, but this is so huge for humans and especially women that 
as we stick our neck out, as we put things out there, as we make something, as we reveal ourselves, as we say, here, I made this, I hope you like it. Yeah. That, that, that feels deeply attached to who we are. For sure. And I think with the, the modern era of, you know, negative criticism on social media, <laughs> um, <Yay>. you know, <laughs> isn't that a good beautiful thing? Uh, that, you know, there's little bits of that that sit in there too. And the fear of going, oh my God, I'm going to get the tsunami of negative feedback. And I've had little bits here and there. People, you know, make comments and, and stuff or don't quite understand what you're putting out there. Um, but it, especially when it's somebody close. And so I feel like how can I lead other people when I'm so scared <laughs> of what people are going to think? Yet you know logically that you don't really care what people think, but when they, especially anonymous people. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there is it. And I know that that's that keeping me safe from taking that next step. So can, may I offer a couple of possible ways to work with building that resilience? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So <laughs> one I think would be around um, anchoring into your truth and love around the work itself, yeah. really specifically. So for example, if it's a blog post that you're putting out or a new course that you that you've created, yeah. I mean, you never know. Like the things sometimes that just blow up and really touch people, I'm like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> this is brilliant and it's like you know cricket <laughs> you don't know what's going to resonate and part of why you don't know what's going to resonate is because what we're creating has a certain degree of subjectivity to it it has it you know it, it, it is your art and if your attention is only on how's it received and is it going to work for people of course it needs to be on that especially if you're offering like a service for them to you know engage yeah. with consume or develop but if it's only on how it is for them, then there can be like a lack of ground in um, your own subjective experience and truth and knowing of what is good and strong about this piece of work. Yeah. Um, and if you're only, you know, caring about what matters to you about it and what's great, great and strong, but you're not actually listening to the feedback and if it works, then you don't get to actually iterate and have it really meet people in their worlds. Yeah. So there's a both and with the making. Yeah. And yeah. so, so one piece I think is with each thing that you're making really anchoring into um, what's my truth in this, what perspective am I taking that I feel really good about that I can back up. Yeah. Not like a defense, but like, there's a solid center and I keep doing this because there's actually something about finding that in the body that yes. I'm operating from a solid center and expressing out from that place. Yeah. So yeah. you have a relationship with the material that's between you and the material and has yeah. nothing to do with anybody else. That makes so much sense. Does it, and would that feel like a different yeah. way of being in relationship with Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, because there is so much self doubt in that. But you know, when sometimes I read something back that I was a bit doubtful of, and I'll read it a couple of weeks later and go, yeah, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's amazing. Well, and even a couple of weeks, right? Because it's like we receive things at different times in different ways. And and even, and it's so noisy out there right now, even though there's a ton of really beautiful work, it's like things are happening so fast. Yeah. The degree to which work can really touch us and integrate us. You know, sometimes the people who are reading or engaging or listening, they're, it, it's not the right timing. It's not the right medicine. It's not what they need. And yeah. sometimes it is. And, yeah. and we can't control that. So if you are in right relationship with your work and with your material, um, then there will feel some, you'll feel some ground and solidity, whether it's ringing or not. Yeah. And then the other... And so that ground and solidity, that's what I wanted to say is that that's part of resilience is that you actually have a state where you can stand and be good and solid regardless of what's happening outside. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece is I wonder, and this I think you would need to um, move into it really gently, um, like more gently than you probably want. <laughs> but around being or, or, or more gently than you would think, but actually start to be in an active process of asking for feedback. 
Yeah. So you, but then, but creating certain containers around it. So here are some that I would create is um, ask somebody who feels safe and even safe enough that um, you can tell them if it feels hurtful okay. and they don't like make it about them. Like they can actually hold space like, oh, I'm hurt. Okay. I can still be here. Even if it's like the most benign feedback that shouldn't be hurtful. Yeah. So like, if, is there somebody that you could do that safely with? Um, have it be on something that feels safe, right? Like not some, something that you've poured your heart and soul into and feel really tenuous and unsure about, Yeah. but something that you've already practiced and feel a sense of solidity. Yeah. And then be really clear on what you want feedback on and what you don't want feedback on. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then notice when it comes in part of the practice is like when it comes in how do i feel how am i reacting what was said and and how am i interpreting it yeah right and and i think what could be cool too is also asking the question what is loving about this feedback yeah and and what touches me as true about this feedback yeah and if you can start to um, have a way of relating to feedback where you can look for what's loving about it, even unintentioned. I mean, some is just garbage. That's not feedback though. That's like criticism and abuse. Yeah. But when there's genuinely well-intentioned constructive feedback and you can feel and experience the love in it because you're not immediately triggered and you can look for the truth in it, now you actually have an incredible gem of a contribution that you can integrate into your work. Yeah. And, yeah. and so then your body of work gets stronger because it's anchored in your perspective and your strength and your seeing, and it's iterating to meet the language needs, desires of the people you're serving. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's perfect. I think you're right. It's about practicing with the, in a contained environment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll likely notice with both of those over time, you'll start to feel more resilient. And so when the unsolicited comments come in, yeah, then they they won't throw you as much. And I think too, you know, the last piece, which it does sound like you have the boundary, but it's still like you close off, but it still goes in. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's like being able to have like, no, that's actually not true for me. Nope. That doesn't fit. Oh, that's your view but it's nope. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's having that as a solid edge going, Hey, you know, okay, let me see it objectively rather than take it in personally and then see how I feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Because, and, and again, like the feedback or criticism or whatever that's coming from others, uh, you know, I see some, some people out there saying like, you know, basically don't listen to feedback. It's not, that's about them, not you, but that's not entirely true. And especially when we want to iterate and develop ourselves, like feedback can be really valuable. Um, but again, not if it's unsafe and not if it's bullying and if it's really unwanted. And so it sounds like part of your work is being able to be available to it when yeah. it's healthy. Um, and sometimes, and always all feedback that's coming is coming through somebody else's experience. Yeah, of course. So that's also important to see is while it may be valuable to improving whatever it is you're doing, while it may ring true and have some beauty and accuracy when you can receive it, it still also is coming through their lens. Yeah. Not all feedback's going to fit and it's okay to reject okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think in the past I've been very reliant on, um, what others thought of my work to have confidence in my own work rather than I can see how it all kind of ties in with what you said before anchoring into the work, because there's been a lot of times where I've relied on other people's feedback of the work to trust the work instead of trusting the work first and then having other people's feedback. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Nice. So that fills it out more for you. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Right. <laughs> you. Anything Thank else for you? No, I think that's good. I can see a way forward through that now. You know, I know there's so much coming and it's a matter of me actually taking steps and 
I want to and I keep distracting myself from that feeling rather than actually doing anything and I just get stuck with not knowing what the next step is but I know that there's something blocking underneath and you're right it's it's anchoring into the work first and then then take it out again awesome thank you thank Thank you you. thank you for being here for you for me and for yeah opening up in a way that other people can receive too thank Thank you you. yeah Yeah. Yeah. okay bye